Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spirit of EQ podcast. My name is Eric Pennington, and joining me today, as always, is Jeff East with Spirit of EQ. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hi, Eric, and everyone else. Today's episode is on the unknown. Life is a journey. Spirit of EQ helps shape and guide the road ahead for individuals, leaders, teams, and organizations striving to realize their full potential through emotional intelligence. Spirit of EQ is a coaching and consulting company that assists individuals and businesses to reach their full potential by developing emotional intelligence. In business, managers and leaders recognize the value of training to develop leadership skills. What they may not realize is that those skills are far more effective when they pay attention to not only performance, but also to people. Emotional intelligence is a crucial skill because people drive performance and emotions drive people. All right, Jeff, this is not a cryptic episode. We're not, uh, we're not exploring uh, the outer reaches of the universe so, to discover life beings and such. Or no <laughs> X-Files. Stuff, right. right. No, no, no X-Files. No, uh, even though the new Matrix movie looks very interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, that's that, another show. <laughs> that, that means I have to go back and watch the other ones again. Yeah, it's, uh, it, I saw the trailer yesterday. It looks really, really good. But um, we digress, which is our best thing. Yes, at least we're not doing it on bass playing and music. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll get to it. So, Jeff, the unknown. Uh, I got w- one really big question to start with. Is the unknown any different than it's always been? You know, in, in my opinion, I think there's more unknown now than there ever has been. Hmm. I mean, if let's say you go back 300 years, which would be 1700, 1720, right, right, right. most people had a very limited life experience. They, you know, or 400 years even, maybe better. Most people couldn't read, you know, which wasn't a stigma, just only a few people would read. Books mm-hmm. weren't available. There was you know, probably not a library that just anybody could go get right. one of these hand-printed books. Uh, we didn't have Nova or the Discovery Channel mm-hmm. to get us thinking. Or Google. Google, yes, to get you thinking. And you know, once you Google one Sorry, thing— Sorry, even though i got to be careful. <laughs> Google doesn't always get you thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. There's a lot of information inside yes. of the Google uh, servers. Yeah, you can go down rabbit holes too. Yep. But uh, I, I think now, as as we get, as we know more, mm-hmm. we know we know don't we don't know as much. You know, okay. you, you talk to somebody like uh, an astrophysicist, the more they discover, the more they don't understand. Or a neuroscientist with your brain, the mm-hmm. more they find out about the brain is, if they're being honest, they they understand how much they don't understand. <laughs> I think the key word there is honest. Being honest, yes. And I know that we are living in an age where knowing and success and winning and all that other stuff is really, really important culturally. But I agree with you, Jeff. And, and I know this can be tough to hear. We don't know. Yeah. And I, quite frankly, when I look at the COVID era that we're living in, which we're heading into almost two years now, uh, I think we should have had a little bit, if not a lot more, we don't know. Right. It's, you know, the one thing I always think is kind of funny when, when steam engines, railroad engines yeah. first became a thing, there were people saying that if the train starts going 60 miles an hour, it'll suck all the air out of your lungs and you'll die. Because wow. they didn't know. Yeah. You know, that seems very, very silly. And I get it, right? There is a, there is a, especially in an age of information like you were alluding to mm-hmm. now, there's this longing for certainty. Mm-hmm. You know, you tell me, what do I need to do? How can we fix it? When can we, when will it be over? When will the next thing? And on and on and on. And I wanted to talk today about the unknown because, you know, there's some, There's some things that I think were fundamentally turned upside down when specifically 2020 turned, Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously the most of it being driven by the pandemic. And that either acceleration or the total turning upside down of things has created a lot of unknowns Mm -hmm. because 
I've sat in business meetings where there's the discussion is you don't have a five or 10 year plan because most businesses understand it's not really that all that clear as to what that's going to look like. And, and it's, you know, there's millions of this in the, in the people in the country right now are wondering, am I ever going to go back to the office or is, yeah. is yeah. it does, I don't know. Am I going to be working from my home for the rest of my career? Yeah. You know, you don't, they don't know. Yeah. And, and, and we've, we obviously have politicized just about everything mm-hmm. and, and quite frankly, and hear me audience loud and clear. Um, this is not one size better than the other. There's not a, it's not that at I, all. I agree with Eric. Okay. What this is about though, and I, I would say this, whether you're a conservative or whether you're liberal, Democrat, Republican, or whatever your party affiliation may be, any part of the world that you may live, one of the dangers, and I think America made the mistake, is that we allowed politics to occupy too large of a space in our soul. And I'm kind of stealing that from a quote, and I can't remember the guy's name, a brilliant quote, is that that's, that's a deadly mistake. Mm-hmm. Because then everything turns into a political argument. Yeah, the old Buffalo Springs song, Hooray for My Side. Yeah, <laughs> as if you were watching a Buckeye or a Trojan or a Seminole, or whatever game. Manchester United. Yes, whatever it may be. <laughs> and nothing wrong with those things, but those belong in a certain place, just mm-hmm. like politics. Right. And I think that that, that, has, that come, has come over. And what I've been telling in my closest circle is how can we be the best version of ourselves despite the unknowns? Because I don't anticipate, Jeff, in the foreseeable future, we're going to get a lot of clarity coming and a lot of these unknowns being swept away. You mentioned the unknowns. Will it be work from home? Will it be hybrid? Will it be back to the office? Will my company be in existence? Right. Is is this relevant? Right. Is this, okay, will the pandemic end once we have boosters? Will... You know, where are we at with diversity and equity? I mean, all of these different dynamics. And I I don't want to diminish any of those problems. They're all very important. Yeah. However, we are going on two years in a pandemic. And Jeff, I have really worked really, really hard here. And maybe my wife would be the ultimate judge to answer this question. I'd like to believe that I'm a better human being post than pre Mm-hmm. I'd like to believe, maybe in a better way to say it would be, I'd like to believe I'm a better version of Eric in 2021 than I am than I was in 2020. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's a, a good statement. I know in my case, I have really felt so much more empathy for people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've seen something posted about remember that that person at the at the door of the store is not the one make, making the mask mandate. You yeah. know, yeah. have empathy for that person. Have empathy for the person that can't wear a mask because they have COPD or whatever. So, you know, have empathy for that that now combination stay-at-home parent and full-time worker. <laughs> yeah. And um, as I know you know this, uh, my mom is recovering from COVID pneumonia. And um, when we... I was the only one that could visit her. That was the hospital rules. Mm -hmm. And at that time, because of the seriousness of her situation, I had to be in full, I I don't know how to say it's not a uniform. I had to be, the the PPE equipment was (laughs) was much stronger than what just wearing a mask when you're going into a grocery store. And I remember the first day I went to visit her, um, the nurse looked at me, Jeff, with these sheepish eyes and really kind of reserved voice and said, I, I hope you don't mind. Um, you, you're going to have to wear, you know, you have, you, are you okay with mm-hmm. that? Now I'm standing there for a moment going, why is the guy looking like he's just like ready to duck? And then it dawned on me. He's probably had an encounter with someone, someone who might've said, you know, my constitutional right says I don't have to do this. Or I don't want to, this is a bunch of BS, right? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And I thought, you know what? This guy needs to know 
and all I had was control over my response. Mm-hmm. It's okay, dude. I'll yeah. put whatever you need on. I'm here to see my mom. That's what my that's my mission. And and the thing is we forget before COVID, you know, somebody with very, very horrible infectious disease of some kind, you would probably have to do that anyway. Yes, but Jeff, <laughs> this is the irony of America in my head. It's like we think before COVID. There was never any of that. Everything was just great. (laughs) Nobody got infectious diseases. Nobody had cancer. We were all good. Nobody just had a heart transplant. And you you had to be sterile, very (laughs) sterile environment. Yeah. You dipped in Purell before you could go in. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So I I bring that up and and I, I say that to say that. Our ability to manage through this. And, and I, you know, again, you know, maybe my wife would be the person. Maybe we'll have her on the show or something. Said so It'll be like, okay, how is Eric doing in these 20 <laughs> areas? But the reality is I, I really wanted that. And, and I, I, I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. I also know that the work is not done. Because I think the acceleration of the unknown is in, in play right now. It is in, it's happening, right? Um, so I want to go at it from an angle too, to, to talk about things like peace and understanding. I mean, I gave a little glimpse there about understanding that, Mm -hmm. Hey, the nurse is just trying to do their job. They're trying to follow things as they, they have to. I see so many people, Jeff, that it's very clear peace is lacking. When we talk about peace, we almost automatically go to the opposite, you know, like war or anger right, or right. something like that. Yep. But what we're talking about is is people having uh, a sense of calm, uh, composure, right? You know those kind of things. And yeah, there's a lot of people that aren't that. That's why we have these people that uh, you know wig out on an airplane because somebody didn't have a mask. There's some place I forget where it was just. Yesterday, I think, some flight had to land because somebody was mad because somebody wasn't wearing a mask. Yeah. And, and, and I know that it goes both ways, right? Because mm-hmm. we've had stories the other way. Around of, too, the yeah. other way. So when, you know, you, you use the term, and I, I, want, I think peace and understanding are kind of two key things today um, that, that I really wanted to delve into. I think back, and I've, I've mentioned this on other episodes, you know, of a diagnosis that I got in... Um, 2020. And just to give the audience a sense about what that really looks like, um, I I was diagnosed with stage four liver disease. And um, fortunately for me, I'm in a very small percentage of those who have it. Um, And that's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is my liver still functions normally. I had no symptoms of anything when I was told you got this. And the bad thing is, is that they don't know why, (laughs) and there is no, quote, treatment cure outside of the things that I have control over, exercise, diet, managing stress, on and on and on. So when that happened, and I know like anyone else, when you hear in stage, you can't help but, and in my case, I confess, I went to Dr. Google and... um, you can see what that means in that world. Mm -hmm. Um, But I tried to turn that around, Jeff, uh, to, okay, so in light of this, because it's true, it wasn't, no one called me the day after and said, oh, we made a mistake. Mm -hmm. How should I live? What, What should my perspective be? Because basically I'm in a place where, and my family doctor told me, after I had kind of said, okay, so, so what should I look for? What should I, what kind of symptoms that would clue me in to know that things could be going south on me? And if you knew my doctor and he's a wonderful guy, he just looked at me and he said, Eric, I, I think you need to understand something. You're probably going to be told that something's going south before you're going to feel it. Oh, and I said, doc, I appreciate the mystery. More unknowns, <laughs> right? So I, I looked at him, and, and then as the ride home, I'm thinking, okay, well, how should I be living in light of, I don't know, how do, what do I, what do I do? Do I do anything differently? So I, I began this thought, 
and I, and I, and it just, I'd always been the person to say, live every day. Like it's your last. I've mm-hmm. always been that person that said, you know, the journey is what matters. You, and there's nothing quite like understanding that the journey matters when you've had eternity whisper your name. Mm-hmm. And guys, audience, I truly not trying to go morbid foreboding here because it's really, really healthy because it has helped me mm-hmm. because now I'm trying to look at the unknown is just another part of this journey I'm on. When I think when we... When that unknown, this is going to sound kind of funny, but when that unknown is now defined, now you have something to dwell on it. You know, you, now you know that that is going to be a factor. But what do you do with that then? It's like um, Chicken Little. The sky is falling, but it wasn't. Or um, we all know that if we uh, walk across the street, we could get hit. But if we think about that every time we walk across the yeah. street, how's your life going to be? Yeah. If, if you think about what you're dealing with um, every time it comes up and all you think about is the end, you know. Uh, well, actually, Jeff, I got to tell you, man, um, w- one of the things that it did, and it was a healthy thing uh, because I carry it with me, um, today I'm – I'm with my mom, and uh, I'm, I'm sitting there. She's talking to a physical therapist. She's going through the post-release mm-hmm. stuff. And it just dawned on me, you know, I haven't sent my wife a text to tell her I love her. Because I used to do that a lot. I got out of the habit. I just, because, you know, I'm like anybody else. Life's moving quickly, and I just let that one slip away. And I thought, you got to do it. And then with my son and with my daughter. And again, Jeff, to your point, it's not, Jeff, I did it today because you never know tomorrow could be the last day type thing. No, no, it is, it is, I've termed it optimistic urgency. Yeah. You know, if I, one of my favorite things to do either in the morning or the evening is to get a a cup of good, strong English style breakfast tea and read a book. And if I think about if I don't read it today, it could be the, this could be the last time ever. I'm not going to have a very good time oh, sitting there. Yeah, it's just something I enjoy doing. So when I'm doing it, I try to just be doing that, you know, not be doing something else. Yeah, and I and I I look at it, um, audience, uh, as it relates to the unknown, is that I I think all of us, regardless of whether we have some sense about you know a timeline or whether we think we're going to live forever, which quite frankly, 20 years ago, <laughs> that was my mantra. <laughs> I thought I'm going to live forever. You just feel that way, right? Yeah, just, what is that old TV show fame? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know what I, you know what I love though? Now here's the musical reference, Jeff. You were the one that said we were going to get to a musical well, reference. We always do. The Rush song, uh, I think it's called Dreamliner. Okay. Realizing we're only immortal for a limited time. That's one of the best lines in a song. And probably that was written by Neil Peart. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. (laughs) And fine-tuned by the other guys. Yeah. So I I look at that, and I I think all of us, we want to have a great life, even if circumstances present tons of unknowns. Because, see, what I also think, and I haven't used this term directly today, is there's a lot of fear that's driving a lot of people right now. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's fed or it's encouraged or it's fostered a lot by media. You made that point and, you know, you know, I, in the I, previous. I just was thinking something. I have a little bottle of water here. Do I need to be told that it doesn't have calories? I would hope not, Jeff. So why do I need that information? Right. But we get that silly kind of stuff that, oh, no, do I have to worry about other water having calories? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so and it's easy for us, right here in the safety of our wonderful studio, to talk about it as if here's what you do, and this is how you do it, and <laughs> and this is what this is, and on and on and on. I get it, guys. I mean, obviously, every day is uh, is a challenge, and I don't mean that as a oh my gosh, how am I going to make it thing. Challenge as in it requires all of our senses and all of our person. To, to live effectively. 
And I thought about it from the perspective that if we can learn to see the unknowns as, again, a part of that journey. And I'm going to give you a story from um, a lady who is, um, she's very inspirational to me. Um, She is a um, corporate uh, caterer. That was the primary part of her business. She does other things and um, just grew it like crazy. It was very, very successful. And then the pandemic hit. And as you can imagine, there's no more corporate catering. Mm -hmm. And she had to learn to pivot. And I, I don't say it like that she never had to learn. She didn't do it before, but this was a crucial time to pivot and figure out, well, what are we going to do differently? How do we survive? How do we on and on and on? And she said um, that she was in a really, really stressful place because should we do this? Should we do that? What are we going to do when things are going to open up again? And she had an aunt who she didn't describe her as a wise old aunt or anything, but I, in my head, I had this vision <laughs> of this very wise woman giving her some tremendous advice. And her advice to her was, you don't need to sweat this stuff. Think of it as this is part of your journey. When you're, when you're on the road to somewhere, you're going to see a lot of different things. You know, if you're on a long journey somewhere, you might see some rain. Mm-hmm. You might see some sun. There might be a deer to dodge in the road. There might be a car in front of you that is going too slow. You might need to get off the next exit to get coffee from Starbucks. It's all a part of it. Embrace that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where I'm coming from, Jeff, is that though I don't, I don't like driving behind people who are driving too slow, right? I don't want rain on my trips. I want my trips to be sunny and, and nice, stable weather, but we all know If you're an adult, if you live long enough, life is full of a mix of different things. And the unknown is part of that. Could you maybe talk a little bit about the understanding thing? Because you you alluded to something, I think you did it um, here on this episode. Um, Actually, no, it wasn't. It was the one we were talking about um, your your journey uh, in brain health. It was about empathy. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned to you peace and understanding. Right. All great for us, Jeff, if we can say, yeah, that's right, man. The unknown is part of the journey on and on. What could we do and apply understanding for those on the journey that maybe go, I don't know how to live life to its fullest when things are going so crazy or, or all these unknowns? You know, for me, I think it would be um, learn to be teachable. That sounds kind of strange. Learn to be teachable, but understand that if something's unknown, you've not explored it. You've not looked at it. You've not had someone that maybe has went through it before tell you about it. So, and don't be afraid of that unknown because. Uh, if it's something that can harm you, yeah, you got to find out about that. But you might be, like you mentioned earlier, through the pandemic, it sounds like you've explored it more and your role that you need to play for the people around you in the pandi- pandemic. So you have been learning and growing. So a lot of those unknowns are, are past for you, I, I would think. Is that right? Well, it, it is. it is one of those things – um, it, it, it was a shift of focus, a shift of priority, right? And, and yes, again, I know some when certain news comes our way, it can be a catalyst for changing priority. Mm-hmm. And, and it brings me to, Jeff, um, there's a quote from uh, one of our favorites, uh, Thomas Merton. Mm-hmm. Um, and he talks about this dichotomy between what we think is super important and what God does, right? And the key in his, this little section of his book was about, we need to flip that and try to figure out a different way of, I don't know how he put it. It was that, I'm going to, I'm probably going to butcher it. Just bear with me. So we feel like career advancement is really, really important. It's Mm -hmm. vital, 
I mean, we got to yeah, – what's your title? How much do you make? On and on. Very – career is a big deal. Work from home or hybrid. When is it going to be? How is it going to be? And he says there's also the birds that rest on farm fields in late fall in their preparation to continue their journey south. Mm-hmm. And have we stopped to just observe them and to slow down? He said that's where real living is. And hear me out, everyone. This is not me saying stop working, don't, get a, don't have a great career, don't get promoted. This is not. But it means if you only focus in on that career thing, but you'd say I've never stopped to watch birds landing in a field, just the observation of it. And I think that that understanding piece for me was, Eric, that's the real important thing there. That's the real important thing. Don't miss that. Because I used to be of that mindset and this idea of dualistic thinking. Well, hey, uh, if, if I focus in on those birds nestled in the trees or landing in the farm field, Mm -hmm. then I won't be able to work on the career thing. And that's going to cost me more. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. Where that, the birds watching, bird watching, will maybe make you a better this. Exactly. Isn't that the interesting thing? Mm -hmm. So if I open to a more non-dualistic thinking, I can go, well, wait a minute. If I just find moments to pause... It could be feeding the thing that's going to take this other thing to a better and higher ground. Those gears grinding in your brain maybe get synchronized now. <laughs> right. And I do believe, Jeff, for me, it's like finding out that in all of this pandemic and all of the upheaval, it's like I saw this on television, um, it's the uh, Hurricane Ida. Mm-hmm. There's a some agency or some group that sends pilots to fly into the hurricane. Mm-hmm. And, and it's all about getting the pressure. Oh, I, I think it's NOAA, the uh, Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, flying, I, I may not have that right, but the, you, you're, you're flying C-130s, I think. Okay. They had, a, they had it videoed. And at first when the video starts, man, this plane is just shaking like you would imagine. I mean, because mm-hmm. they're, they're sustained winds, right, at like 100 miles an hour. But once they got past that and into the eye, mm-hmm. just, it was one of the most beautiful and peaceful scenes. And there's this part of me that goes, we have access to that eye every single day. But you have to get through the turbulence. Boom. That message is not only for you guys in the audience, it's for me, it's for Jeff. I, I just think that that picture really just captures it, right? Um, and yes, at the end of the story, we want the story that we look back on to be one that was filled with that pursuit. Recognizing I'm not going to hit it every day. I'm, I'm going to make the mistake. I'm not going to always get it right. But if that's my life's pursuit... I'm going, to have, I'm going to have a better story. Mm-hmm. So when you think about it, what's a practical tip that you might think of if someone says, okay, I like the idea of this. So what is, what's some small things that maybe somebody can do to begin that journey toward being to able to live more purposefully in light of or despite all the unknowns that, that we are encountering? You know, I think a good way to start was, is to take some time and find out what your priorities really are. What are the things, what is important to you? Mm-hmm. Is your career important if worrying about the pandemic is important? Or mm. is spending time with your kids going to look at that, those birds out in the field? Find out what it is that is really important to you. And I think it's important that when you, when you name them, why? Yeah. You, you know, you just hit on a point there, Jeff. Um, and, and those of you in the audience, you know, this, this is not, not our recommendation again about zero sum type stuff, right? It is not like, okay, you either choose a career or you choose this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, granted, I know there are some people who need to stop doing the work they're doing because mm-hmm. it is harming the things that they have, they know readily are, are more important. I saw a clip of a video 
uh, with uh, Brene Brown. Mm-hmm. And she's being interviewed by Tim Ferriss, right? Um, and just a wonderful video. And they're talking about a lot of different things. And she was going, you know, I, I assume, I don't know this. So those of you in the audience, if I'm wrong, please forgive me. I think she must have, she must be an alcoholic because she was talking about 12-step program mm-hmm. and she mentioned AA. And she said, well, there's a common approach in AA that we use. And that is, how's that shit working out for you? <laughs> And I think one of the practical things mm-hmm. I would say is when you evaluate your career, mm-hmm. how's that shit working out for you? You know, when you evaluate, and, and here's the thing, guys, it's not saying that if the answer is it's not going well, that you mean to quit. Right. Okay? If, 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 if things aren't working out well for you with your kids, well, maybe you need to course correct. Maybe you need to look at doing it differently. Right. Um, but I think that, and a less, um, <laughs> colorful way of saying mm-hmm. it was how's this making your life better right and so let's say you prioritize things and you want to ensure that your kids have the chance for, have the chance for good education to go to college if that's what they want so that hard work are you hard working for that goal or are you hard working because you want to have the corner office which which why are you doing yes. this hard work yep but then you have to balance it because by the time the kids get to college, if they don't know what you look like because yep. of your work, yep. that's out of balance too. So it's 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 a combination, I think, of of identifying what's important, and then we we talk about this when we we uh, in our spiritual emotional uh, intelligence assessment that we have, and one of them is balance. One of the I always get drivers. I have to look, drivers. drivers. Yes, I okay. always get I always get it anyway. Too. But yeah. but balance is a, a is a third of the of this assessment that we use. So make sure you're balanced. Start with there. You know, identify and then balance. You know, get it the way you want it. I think the other thing, and obviously Jeff and I are not just hosts of the Spirit of EQ podcast. Um, our company is in the business of helping people through this journey too. So whether you look at us as a possible coach, mentor, Jeff, another thing would be to potentially hire a coach or work with a company that can provide some mm-hmm. data and some assessments, something where you can know exactly where you're at. And, and you've alluded to this before. It's a starting point, right? Right. Okay. So if it's a starting point, does that mean, hey, this is not an end all? Is that what you're saying? Right. Because we're living, <clears throat> breathing changing people right you know, right physically we're changing uh, our mental state changes the knowledge we have changes so everything is it, it's it's dynamic and so yeah it's a starting point and you know what you want to work on today you know let's say okay you've decided that okay i do need to back off on my work drive and yeah. and it might be I need to back off from work drive and take care of myself. I may need to, mm-hmm. you know, take three days and go down in the Smoky Mountains and live in a cabin by myself or whatever it is. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. So it's not always going to be the same. Yeah, and I would also say uh, one of the things, regardless of what you do, whether it's hiring something, someone or a company or whether you do it on your own, whether you have friends, whatever your, your mode is, we're kind of suggesting just – don't go it alone and and go easy on yourself mm-hmm. as it relates to it's not overnight. It's not a, this. We are not dispensing silver bullets that if you do this today, tomorrow, everything will be fill in the blank. Exactly. It's 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 ongoing when you choose a path of uh, improvement. You'll find that it's it is ongoing. You're never going to get to the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just remember that, that yeah. it's, that's just the way it is. That's the way it works. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've enjoyed being with you today, everyone, and uh, we look forward to our next time together. Take care. Hi, everyone. This is Eric Pennington with The Spirit of EQ. I'm not introducing a new episode today. I'm here to tell you some things that might help you. Jeff, you're with me as always. So yes. how do people get in touch with us? Well, the best way is just send us an email at info at spiritofeq.com. That's awesome. Jeff, I was also thinking about reviews. 
and I'm notoriously bad at asking for them. So, reviews on all of the platforms, wherever you get your podcasts, yes. you think that'd be good? I think that would be great because, one, that will help us learn how to make better ones. And it's always good for us. So, to we're, hear. we're not the perfect podcast host. We're close. Okay. All but, right. But, but not, still, not totally. We want perfect. your feedback. We want your feedback. But it it also might uh, let us know a new subject. Hey, we need to dig deeper into that. Yeah. So let us know what you think. Cool. We really appreciate that. As always, too, there is social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and we also have a YouTube channel. Those also have mechanisms or, or options for you to be able to leave a comment, a like, or those kind of things. Just want to make sure that you know how to get in touch with us. Right, Jeff? Right. We appreciate you all. Thank you.